Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Masashige Mizuyama, CTO of Panasonic Automotive Systems. Today, I'd like to talk about the software-defined vehicle trend and the key technologies. This is the, uh, today's content. I will start to point out that the various ongoing drastic changes in automotive area are mostly driven by SDV, software-defined vehicle. And I'll touch upon what automotive industry can learn from the history of other industries to deal with this first ever drastic changes, and how agile activities are accelerating the key technology development in open source community. Then I'd like to talk about the drastic changes happening in the automotive industry at first. In this decade, Technologies for automotive are drastically changing. For example, EE architecture is rapidly changing toward large-scale central computing from distributed hundred small control units called ECU. Hypervisor is inter being introduced to software platforms. As technologies from consumer or communication products such as Android are brought into vehicles. Open source is being quite popular among various functional domains, and att attempts to establish de facto standards are becoming very active. Most new vehicles are getting always connected natively and they massively powered by AI technologies. Thus, various changes are observed and sometimes they seem random and individual to each other when we don't understand the root driving force properly. For instance, if we assume that the consolidation of ECUs is driven by just by cost and weight reduction, I believe we will misunderstand the future direction because it's true, but uh, not essential. I believe that all of those changes are mostly driven by a common root driver. It's a shift toward the SDV. They say most part of future innovations in aut automotive will be brought by software. In other words, SDV is the game changer to the new game where those who can advance their software more rapidly will gain crucial competitive advantage. And I think it's inevitable. So I think that that is the only way we can understand the essential reason why all those changes are happening and where are those changes are heading for. But this game is not as simple as just to maximize line of code per month, nor just to possess even larger software team. Rather than just simple volume factors, there are far more important factors such as sophisticated architecture which makes the software asset more valuable for longer term, ecosystem of complementary products which makes value of your product higher, and faster speed of product discovery as well as product development. So we can find insights to identify key success factors of the game in the history of computer industry and mobile phone industry, which has shifted to be software-defined way ahead of automotive. So I'd like to discuss about the history and the insights from here. The first case is the mobile phone industry. Uh, the major competition of mobile phone in early times was done in size, weight, battery life, and uh, communication performance pretty much hardware-defined world, but it has shifted towards software-defined. The major trigger was obviously the internet connection. While this shift progressing, digital and software ecosystem has been growing so rapidly. While this shift, uh, many, so many, many legacy players failed to adapt to the change, and unfortunately, the failure was fatal. However, what they did was not just to keep, keep wandering. In fact, on the contrary, 
they formed a bunch of standardization bodies to create an ecosystem. But most of them aimed a kind of gradual and painless changes. As the result, as you know well, newcomers set the dominant standards and gained enormous power. During this process toward the software defined product, mobile phone industry became quite horizontal by the emergence of specialized key technology vendors because this is the best efficient way for the industry. The ecosystem grew larger and larger immediately after the hardware connected to the internet. And massive agile service providers jumped in and uh, generated huge customer value at the rightmost figure. Only, only a few platforms or architectures which fit to this situation survived, and others could not avoid the, distin the distinction at all. The size of value provided by the terminal manufacturers, which is shown in the blue box in this figure, uh, except uh, got relatively smaller and smaller, except for a few manufacturers. And they became pretty much substitutable. The next case is the general computer industry. The computer architecture has been going back and forth between distributed and centralized. Every generation, hardware architecture drastically changed, driven by the evolution of semiconductor technology. In such situation, around 1970, um, very long time ago, IBM introduced a very unique strategy. They introduced they introduced hardware virtualization technology to make their software work over several generations of hardware. Because software is the most expensive asset, this strategy gave IBM the crucial competitive advantage against formidable contemporaries. So this is the typical case which shows the critical importance of architecture for competitive advantage in software, software-defined products, and also shows the critical importance of virtualization technology to preserve software asset over generations. So as the summary, uh, those are the insights from the history of preceding industries. One, preserving software assets beyond drastic hardware changes critically strengthens your competitive advantage, and virtualization technology plays a key role. Two, shifting to the software-defined product inevitably transforms the industry structure toward efficiency optimization, and architectures with weak fit, weak fit to the software-defined products will face to the extinction eventually and be taken over by others. So technology itself has changed largely from those histo hist historical cases, though. I think those essential insights which I mentioned here so far can be applied to the ongoing changes in the automotive industry. With this view viewpoint, I'd like to discuss about what we should do, we should do for the evolution of SDV. In 2020s, the electronic architecture will change drastically to adapt to SDV. ECUs are rapidly growing to be uh, rapidly going to be consolidated through those generations, heading toward one or few central high-performance vehicle computers called HPC, and its software will be assumed to be updated continuously even after shipment. And the update, updates must be applied for many generations simultaneously, like smartphones do. But the consolidation of ECUs is not the aim, but the means. The true aim is to establish the optimal environment for the fastest software evolution for SDV. So, 
One of the most important points here is like the right-hand side figure, to realize a sophisticated logical architecture for the vehicle system, which can endure over the vehicle generations, and on which software can evolve very efficiently. So same as the computer history, which I mentioned, virtualization technology will play the key role. As you know, virtualization technology provides a dedicated virtual machine to each different operating system, all of which runs on a single physical machine simultaneously. So, and the, this virtual machine keeps compatible to preserve the software assets above the virtualization layer, even when the detail of physical machine drastically changes over the generation or even different SOC used. However, uh, this slide is uh, except from the, uh, the AMM 2019 keynote, uh, which I made in Monaco. Um, uh, however, because there was no established standard interface for virtualization layer at that time, ecosystem was not healthy. Uh, to solve this situation, Panasonic has been uh, proposing to deploy VertIO as a standard virtualization interface for automotive systems, and has been leading the development of VertIO with the uh, virtualization expert EG in AGL, and uh, leading the development of VertIO front end and the per virtual device drive the driver for automotive as open source project with other various contributors. We have been working for almost five years, and finally now, I think we can say VertIO has become the standard of automotive device virtualization. Frankly speaking though, uh, it is still on the way. We need to cover more devices. Industry should deploy VertIO sta standard more, more widely and there still remains some vendor lock-in situation. So we need to continue this effort for our healthy ecosystem. In AGL, uh, Panasonic has been serving as a leader of the virtualization expert group to promote the de deployment of VertIO for AGL UCB. Various members also have been contributing. Thank you for the con great contribution. By this activity, AGL software can be decoupled from diverse hardware targets across different vehicle variants or generations. Such environment parity can be achieved regardless whether on a single ECU or multiple ECUs, and even whether the ECUs are physical at the edge or virtual in the cloud, as I, I will touch upon afterwards. So when uh, SDV is fully deployed, frequent software update will take place, as you understand well. In this situation, similarly with modern IT industry, not only the speed of product development, but also the speed of product discovery will be the important key success factors of the game. So I believe DevOps practice will spread over automotive industry as well as data analytics and the brand new recurring type of business models. To make them work efficiently, cloud native development will become in practice. At that time, most part of the development including testing will be done in the virtual environment in the cloud server and software will be deployed to real vehicle very frequently. In this use case again, VATIO will play the key role to realize the compatibility between the real hardware in the vehicle and the uh, virtual hardware in the cloud. Talking about the cloud native, I must mention that AWS has been leading container and service mesh expert group, which has been working on enabling AJL to running on the cloud together with virtualization expert group. They are realizing workload orchestration for AGL across a single or multiple nodes inside and outside vehicle. 
very impressive work. So those two expert groups, container and service mesh expert group and the virtualization expert group, share synergy in the way that they are trying to achieve the same goal. That is decoupling software from hardware. They have already been working back to back with, with each other in the previous year to accelerate AGL movement towards the cloud native. And now I'm very glad to announce a new expert group tentatively named the Software Defined Vehicle Ex Expert Group, tentative, tentative name, <laughs> has been established by combining expertise of two original groups in device virtualization and microservice orchestration. And Panasonic is assumed to serve to lead this new expert group collaborating with AWS, who will continue to lead the microservice uh, orchestration related activities. This is the near term roadmap of the newly established expert group. Um, after the issue and the expectation discovery for SDV in real production, they will jointly work with other expert groups such as IBI ex expert group and the instrument cluster expert group to work out product ready requirements and use cases for AGL in terms of SCV. They will then design, develop, and deploy an SCV reference POC for AGL by the end of next year. On the other hand, not like this slide actually, to make development agile, they are planning to give step-by-step -step MVPs, uh, minimum viable products, to primarily prove the concept. They are targeting to show it on next year CES. We believe this new expert group will drive forward the agile development on SDV with even greater speed and efficiency, and they will call for more collaborations from AGL members to work together in the expert group to jointly define the future of AGL and the automotive world. The leader of SDV ex expert group, Jerry from Panasonic, will give a presentation on the detail of this expert group at uh, 11.50 today. And there will be also a demo from the expert group in the HL booth of Embedded World next week. So illustrating uh, cloud native HL environment with Flutter. I sincerely hope you can visit these events. Thank you very much. <laughs>